Hey, what's up, everybody? I know you guys are irritated with me. I'm irritated with myself. I know that I'm late, but you know, we're here. So let's talk. So this is the review for Ready to Love Season 5. I believe it is Episode 10. We are getting down to the end of this show. And thank you, Lord. Hopefully they give us a little bit of a longer break for the next one. So we pick up where we left off with the elimination times. We have... Um, Cornelius and Camille and then we have Zadia talking to Naeem because both of them are in the bottom this week um Naeem is not the one that ends up going home it's actually Cornelius but when Cornelius goes home Camille decides that she is going to self-eliminate which I figured that she was going to do um she gave me everything I needed you know the tears the dramatics the 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 um fanning of the face the the breathing heavy <laughs> She made quite the exit on her way out. Um, when Cornelius was saying that he was going home and knowing that he was going home and talking about the journey, he looked relieved at the table that he was going to get to go home. And then when Camille said she was going to self-eliminate, his face was like, oh, <laughs> so I'm taking you with me on this journey home. Yes, Cornelius, take her with you um, because she is, well, you are her strongest connection. And she says that, there's nobody else there for her. Uh, Cornelia says that he doesn't really know where it's going to go with him and Camille. Um, Camille says she sees marriage and a family and um, baby steps for Cornelius. And as they pull off and we watch them drive out of this uh, driveway, this process, um, you know, I could think to myself was this is where this is, Cornelius isn't saying anything. <laughs> and I don't care what anybody says. If you don't want to say anything to the girl, then you obviously like it. He's not saying anything. He's just kind of going along with it. So I hope that if he's not feeling it, he will at some point speak up and say that. Moving on. Um, we got Shiloh and um, Jonte Phil. And for those of you who are confused, I call him Jonte because he looks like Jonte from South Carolina, but his name is Phil. Uh, Jonte Phil and Shiloh are in the kitchen. And Shiloh pulls out the five love languages game, which actually sounds really cool, but it sounds cool in the context of being in a real relationship, not necessarily on ready to love, but I get what she was trying to do. Um, she's asking Phil some questions because I think she's trying to figure out in a very non-threatening way um, how Phil feels about her. And she's trying to figure out a way to put her cards on the table without coming off too strong and um i was looking at shiloh and y'all not about to tell me she don't look like that girl they eliminated in the beginning um the one that got into it with the, the guy with the crazy eyes they look similar to me but anyway um shiloh is asking him questions about what do you say about me um what are things that you say about me to other people uh then the question comes around with what can i do more of um for you and I think Shiloh ends up telling him that she wishes he would be a little bit more direct with her um, say what he needs say how he's feeling because uh, she seems to be very direct and upfront with her feelings um, when he asks her what are you trying to hide she says that she's hiding the fact that she really likes him and she really cares for him um, and she chooses him to continue this connection in this journey with like that is who she chooses to, um, who she's choosing to be closer to. Um, and this always happens at the end of the process. Somebody always, well, not always, somebody usually puts their cards on the table before another person does. It's a risk that you have to take. I always admire the person who's able to do it, but it's scary because that other person might pull back or they might move in closer. Usually they pull back and then you have to watch this whole thing play out where the other person's I don't know, darn near chasing. And it's just, I hate when we get to this part of the show. I understand it, but I just really, really hate it. I do admire Shiloh for putting her cards on the table. I always admire genuine people. Um, I just wish she would have let John Tayfield do it first because I, I don't want to see Shiloh hurt. And he ends up kissing her after um, she says that. And to me, it was a cop out. I just think it was a way for him not to really express how he truly felt. But he tells us in the confessionals that he's not ready at the point where he wants to choose her. And I don't I don't know, you guys, maybe I'm just um, 
projecting, but I just wish people would be a little bit more honest uh, when it comes to dating. Like, yes, it does hurt. Might even cause some tears. <laughs> Might even cause some anger. Um, but, you know, let people know so that they can even move on with their feelings or maybe it's something they need to improve on or whatever. But I, I don't know. I, I just it was something about it that rubbed me the wrong way. But you guys can let me know what you think about that. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, let me try to di- let me try to dissect this the best I can. I don't know if I got it right in my head, but I'm just going off of what I saw. Okay, so Dante and Zadia. To me, just upon what, listening to their initial interaction, it sounds like they have had a failure to communicate for the last three days. Dante backed off when he saw Zadia's energy. He did not pursue her as much because he felt like she was feeling somebody else. He went elsewhere to his other connection and got that stronger with Aisha. Um, Zadia, instead of communicating to um, Dante, she just kind of kept it going and was waiting on him to say something to her about why he had backed off. And it seemed like neither one of them really communicated about how they felt about each other in the last three days. They've just been separately working on their other connections, right? Um so uh, immediately I'm seeing a failure to communicate right off when they have, when now that they are finally communicating, Dante does let her know about the situation with Aisha and Zadia is letting him know that she felt mishandled and she felt like she wasn't protected going into eliminations, finding out that he has this strong connection with Aisha and they done had rub downs and everything like that. Like, let me know that something like that is going on. Don't let me go into eliminations blindly. Um, Dante says he goes into eliminations blindly all the time. So they're not going to agree on this situation. Um, But I guess Zadia was not aware that Dante was interested in anybody at all. I don't know if she was aware that he had been talking to Aisha on the phone or any of that. But like I said, to me, this is an overall failure to communicate um, with the two parties. Now, now that the failure to communicate part is cleared up and we know where everybody stands, Zadia is upset with him. She says that um, he he didn't he didn't handle this correctly. He kind of went ghost on her for however many days and didn't tell her what was going on. And now he's finally trying to communicate with her, and she just really doesn't appreciate it. Um, I think she's experiencing some feelings of rejection. Um, the the way that Dante is speaking to her, I don't I don't know, you guys. It just it made me wonder, did they have a stronger connection than we know of? Because they both are kind of worked up and they, in and there, well, not Dante, not so much. I'm talking about in his words and what he's saying, like, I was pursuing you. Mm-hmm. I was, I was, you know, ready for you. I liked you. It just sounds like there was more to it than what we saw on the show, because even she um, go, comes back and says that she wanted to choose him and she would have rolled for him. And, um, I didn't know you were never playing second fiddle to anybody. There just seems to be, it seems to be a little emotionally charged if you kind of read between the lines. Um, so once he says he's going to pursue his connection with Aisha, she was like, okay, that's what you're going to do. You're going to go with Aisha and all her long talks about nothing. Cool. And she gets up and leaves. Zadia really could have left it at that. Okay. She said her piece. He said her piece. And when she left, I wasn't even mad at her. I was like, uh, you know, that was a little... You know, it was a little, it was, it, was, it was a little rough. It was a little rough, but you know, she handled it okay and all right. But it was when she came back. <laughs> if that elevator would have came just a little bit earlier, it was when my sis came back where it did not go well. And, um, you know, I, I, I know it made Zadia look bad. So when she got back, um, she went off on Dante. She said she felt mishandled. She didn't like the way he treated her. Um, she got in his face. She was touching on his face, telling him he was wrong, that he was a clown. And I was like, oh, Zadia, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, she was mad, y'all. She was mad. And I honestly, I would have been, I don't like that she got in his face, but I would have been fine if she was upset with Dante. I just hated that she kept bringing Aisha into it, saying that she was dumb and she ain't talking about nothing. Like, don't bring her into it just because she has a connection with him and that's who he chose. Don't bring her into it. But I think Zadia was feeling some rejection. I think that they should have communicated about this days ago if she felt some type of way. 
probably should have said something in the house that would have been much, I mean, during the trip, that would have been much, much better. Um, I'm hoping that Dante really does like Aisha. It isn't just doing this to get under Zadia's skin because um, I don't want to see Aisha hurt. Um, but Zadia, girl, you know, it's all right. It's all right. I, I just think you, <laughs> I think you just having a hard time, <clears throat> hard time. Um, it's one of two things. Either she just having a hard time catching the L with Dante, like she didn't think this was going to happen. Or it's number two, she actually had did have some deeper feelings towards Dante than we realized. And um, she didn't think it was going to go this way. But either way, girl, you, I don't want you looking pressed like this. Now get on the elevator, go head on, you know, do what you got to do. Dante was pleased with himself. He had a little smirk, okay? Um, I, I, I hope he isn't doing this solely to get under her skin, though. I hope he really does like Aisha. But you guys can let me know what y'all thought about that part. All right, and so little stuff of the group. Now, um, Walter goes out with Sabrina. I will say Walter and Sabrina look really good together. When they walk in the room, they're both very striking people. They're good-looking people, so they look great walking down that street together. They're going to go eat. And the only thing I really got out of the conversation with the two of them is we talk a little bit about Sabrina's past and her being a stripper. Walter realizes everybody has a past, so he's not that concerned about it anymore. Um Sabrina does talk about how she was bullied and how this became a source of empowerment for her. Her going out and getting it, she needed the money, um, but she also kind of got her confidence up while she was doing that. Um, I've heard other people who've danced say those say similar things, so that was what it did for her um, and turned her into a different person, the person that she is today. Um, Sabrina and Walter, Sabrina's having hurt some feelings about Walter that I actually think are accurate for her to be having. Um, she says that even though Walter has decided to choose her, she almost feels like it's by default because she doesn't really talk to Walter. She doesn't hear from Walter. And so she returns that same energy to Walter um, that he gives. And she lets him know that. Like, if, if you ain't talking, then I probably won't be talking that much either. And she says that she wants to make sure that she moves slowly with Walter and not just fall into it just because he's saying the right things. All good. I'm, I'm with Sabrina on all of that. Every single bit of that, I'm with her on all of that. Um, as far as Sydney and Jante feel, you know, Jante feels energy was different with Sydney. Um, maybe because Sydney holds back a little bit um, more than Shiloh. I feel like with Shiloh, I want her to just enjoy the process, but I think the the, the therapist in her, the coach in, the coach in her, all of that um, kind of puts her in a position sometimes where she just likes to explore and get people to open up um, instead of just kind of sitting back and enjoying herself in this particular process. You know, this isn't this isn't a process where she has to do that. She can just really in, enjoy it, you know, and and you know, let people, let people get hurt open up, you know, play the, play the reverse card. Um, it's interesting because I have, I can have a similar way to me. So it's interesting watching it. Um, but I think that might be where her and Jonte Phil's relationship is a little bit different. Um, with Sydney, you can tell that even though she does ask questions, um, she, she doesn't really try to, I'm going to use the word probe as much. And maybe that allows a, a space for Jante Phil to, to open up a little bit more to her where he does talk about his mom and how, um, he wasn't able to give her grandchildren and how that still makes him feel some type of way to this day. And now he's more intentional with his dating versus how he was in the past. Y'all know how that past go. He's a little bit more intentional about time and not wasting it, which is good. Okay. Nobody wants to waste their time. Honey, time is a woman's most valuable asset. We don't got time for that. And so, um, Sydney appreciates his vulnerability. Um, y'all know Sydney is real, you know, she likes to, she likes to, uh, you know, lay the hand. She likes a closeness connection, um, hands on physical touches. <laughs> so, um, they did share a kiss with one another, a uh, mutual kiss. I, I believe they both kind of went for it. And, um, John Tay, Phil keep kissing her, honey. He can't stop kissing her hands and her arms. And, and, you know, she does have a whole lot of appeal. Um, and you, she finds it funny, but you, you know, Sydney keeps it real. She still got this connection with Frank. And so I appreciated her for keeping it real about that. But um, Jonte Phil, I think, definitely has his eye on her. 
All right, so the men meet up to deliberate and decide who's going to go home. We already know who is one person on the bottom, but there's another person. Mew Men also ends up on the bottom um, just due to not really having that many connections. Zadia ends up on the bottom because... First of all, when the men get get in the room, Frank, you could I could Frank must have been like um the classroom monitor because Frank get in there and baby he said if I'm gonna tell it then I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell it all. Frank is telling on everybody. He telling what happened at the dinner. He telling how it went down. He telling what names was brought up. He telling about the brown girl squad. He telling he telling. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not mad at Frank. Um, you could tell he was really annoyed by how that whole situation played out and how it continues to play out. He play out. He was even more disgusted when Dante tells um, that him and Zadia had a conversation and a finger was put in his face. He was just like, "Oh no." <laughs> um. So Zadia does end up in the bottom. However, um, Naeem is letting everybody know that that's not the energy that he gets from Zadia. So whatever happened between her, him and Dante doesn't have anything to do with him. The men are trying to get him to understand that just because you haven't seen it yet doesn't mean that you're not going to see it. She's been this way during the whole process. She's been this way with me. She's been this way with others you probably won't be exempt. And I really didn't have an issue with them having this conversation about Zadia to Naeem because um, we would probably do the same thing if we saw some aggressiveness with a man um, and we knew about it. We would probably tell our homegirl, like, look, girl, I don't know if he liked this with you, but this is how he was like uh, with so-and-so. And they had a conversation and he got in her face. You know, we would do the same thing. So I think they are just trying to look out for Naeem. It's less about making um her look terrible and more about you know just let Naeem know what do you this is just something you need to be aware of basically um Naeem don't care <laughs> Naeem said that's not the energy he receives and um that's that's not the energy he's going to worry about um just like your home girl say well you know he ain't like that with me <laughs> It's the same, same type of energy. And you just kind of got to shrug your shoulders and move on and let them do what they do. So um, they have a deliberation with Mew Man and Zadia. And um, Zadia, now, baby, I'm going to tell you, Zadia, if you're going to get eliminated, you're going to get eliminated like this. Okay, because she came to slay. Um, Mew Man looked beautiful as usual. And she says she's going to have a conversation with Walter. He may tell her about Sabrina, uh, Sabrina's connection, and she don't care nothing about that. She don't care if uh, Walter got a connection with a toad at this point. <laughs> Because she is no longer worried about Walter. She has eliminated herself when it comes to Walter. Um, and so when they do meet up, they too talk about their communication issues that they've been having. Um, what happened at the piano. And I still say that Walter was just trying not to be awkward. Like pushing up on them women at the same time. He didn't want to do that. But I guess as the rest of the trip went on, he never really kind of checked back in with Mew Men other than when they were at the pool. Um, I still don't think I agree with what everything that Mew Men was saying at that pool, but if she's no longer interested, that's fine. She is no longer interested. Just don't make it about the other woman that you're not interested. Make it about Make it about Walter. If you feel like he's been distanced, then make it about that. But don't make it about Sabrina. That's all I'm saying. Um, but Muman's done. Okay. And they, they had a conversation. They still don't really come to an agreement about the way that they were handling it. Um, and this show and shows like it just lets, always lets you know how differently men and women think. Um, but they're both glad they had the conversation. And we know that Muman is going to be staying and working on her connection with Frank. Now, Moving on uh, with Zadia, uh, um, her and Jante feel even their conversation is very tense. When they're talking to each other, um, she's telling Jante feel uh, that she does know that she could have communicated better, okay? Because Jante feel asked her what could, she could have done better. She says that she knows she kept it going when she should have pulled it back. She was giving that, that, you know, that black mama conversation. I wanted to be like, leave black mamas out of this. <laughs> Okay, leave black mamas out of this and talk about yourself. Um, but she says she knew that she took it too far. But each time she tells, 
she admits that she did something wrong. She tries to cover it with something else. So that was actually the funny part. She was like, but, you know, I mean, I just felt like he could have communicated with me. He should have communicated with me. And when he came in that room and he told y'all what y'all did, I'm sure he made me seem like this, this, and this. And now these men are thinking that. But I bet if I could tell my part, they would say that he would have needed to. And maybe he did. Okay. I already said that I agree that y'all had a failure to communicate. But it's all about how you handle it on the back end. And I kind of just wish Zadia, I mean, listen, I'm not perfect, you guys. I'm a very emotional person. And people will tell you that I can go off. You know, I will sit, I will not sit here and lie about that. Um, but when I do, I always, when I know I've taken it too far, I try to go back to the person I took it too far with and I will apologize. I can't even, I don't even try to be like, cause you know, I was feeling some type of way. No, I, I mean, I took it too far period. <laughs> and that's it. And I, I just wanted Zadia to say that, but I, I, I don't know. I, I, Zadia, I feel like there's some other layers to her that I don't have time to unpack, but, um, she ends up telling John Tay Phil, okay, y'all have decided I'm not ready to love. She finished the sentence for him. Um, Phil say, John Tay Phil say, how you going to tell me? Um, John Tay Phil tried to take up for his boy and was like, maybe Dante didn't communicate cause he cared about your feelings. Uh, nah, John Tay Phil. John Tay Phil, we ain't finna do that now. You got to communicate. <laughs> I'm, I didn't agree with all of that. Um, but Zadia kind of eliminated herself. John Tay Phil was taking too long. And she goes on about her way and her business. Now, Naeem meets up with nephew Tommy because Zadia is his only connection. He doesn't have any connections with anybody else. Was anybody else disturbed in eliminations when he said that um, Sydney's voice was annoying and he was willing to eliminate her just off of that. I was like, Ooh, child, <laughs> why Sydney got to get all that smoke. But, um, he tells nephew Tommy, he doesn't really have any other connections. Tommy tells him, look, I hope this works out for you. Okay. Just, I, just cause like, like we said before, just because she hasn't done it with you doesn't mean she's not capable. So I'm just, I'm just saying Naeem, be careful with this. But either way, even if Naeem doesn't choose Zadia, you know, leaves the show and doesn't choose Zadia, he doesn't have any other connections. Um, but Naeem says that he is introverted. He's not a very social person. And to be able to do this show, I got to give it to him. I'm very introverted. I don't think I would have been able to do well on this show. And so, you know, he, he lasted pretty long, but he said he doesn't have any other ones and he will be self-eliminating. And so he goes on about his way. So I guess we'll see what happens at the reunion. Who's together? Who's not together? Um, it looks like on the preview, some stuff is going on, child. What happened with Jonte, Phil, and Shiloh? How did they, what happened, y'all? Something happened with Jonte, Phil, and Shiloh. Um, I hope Shiloh, y'all, y'all think with some sex or something, but what y'all think happened? Let me know what y'all think happened. Cause she was crying. Um, what else is on the next preview? Mew men's daddy is going to give me a laugh. Okay. <laughs> I can already tell by the way he was looking when, when, um, she, uh, Frank said it was another woman. <laughs> Um, cause they're going to be meeting families next week. And Aisha's mom is not impressed about the three baby mamas, which, you know, I, I can't blame Aisha mama. We already talked about this. So you guys let me know what you thought about this episode, like comment and subscribe. And again, I'm sorry, I'm late and I will see y'all for the next one. All right. Bye.